Hey all, hope you're keeping well. Another video today on a Lightroom alternative. If you're considering cutting the cord to Adobe and moving to Affinity Studio, it's one of the applications that you'll probably miss. Obviously with Adobe Premiere and After Effects, you've got DaVinci Resolve, which handles most of that kind of video editing and special effects. But this is the one piece of the puzzle that needs to be filled. So I've been looking at software that's cross-platform and includes Linux and the best Lightroom alternative I've found so far is a project which is relatively young but very usable already and it's called Rapid Raw. So let me show you it. Here's the application and you when you open it you can just select a folder of your raw files i've already got one selecting but yeah you just go navigate to your your customer folder if it's like a wedding album or whatever and then in the settings you can set the resolution of the preview so it's under processing i think yeah so i've got mine for 1080p now just for like quick processing but you can have 4k jpeg renders which is basically how the image will look when you're moving the sliders up and down. So not quite like smart previews, but it's um, by the looks of things, this, this software is very designed to be GPU run for best performance. So let's go straight to the workflow. Here's an album. And you'll see if we open an image, it's laid out exactly like Adobe Lightroom. So it's very easy to transition to. Now, I did do a review on this just over a month ago because I wasn't happy with the exposure and shadow sliders, but it's been massively improved already. And the guy that's making it is doing like weekly updates. So last week was 1.44, this week's 1.45. And every time it comes with a new feature or an improved feature. And the newest feature so far is this AGX exposure, which works very well because the original exposure was um, had a nasty effect on the contrast. But you've got two methods of exposure here. So you've got basic here. And then you've got the AGX style of editing. And rather than have exposure at the top, it's got brightness, which just lifts the midtones. So maybe in the future, he'll put that exposure back up there. I personally think that the AGX works well enough. So I'd put the exposure back at the top, maybe then just have do away with basic or have a tiny drop down and have additional settings but to keep it close to Lightroom at this stage I think it's a good idea because it'll help my people people migrate the problem with the um, open source raw editors so far is they just overkill like if you look at Darktable it's got five different ways of adjusting contrast alone if you try editing a wedding that way it's going to drive you nuts and just take too long I mean you can use a preset but sometimes too much choice is paralyzing so anyway i'll run you through the rest of this app so you've got your usual shadow sliders here highlights blacks you've got your tone curve it still needs a white balance eyedropper to be implemented you can adjust it here, but you just can't sort of select a grey area to do it for you. Um, the one thing I've been commenting on on the GitHub, which I'll post in the description, is this vibrance slider still needs to protect the skin tones because it, it affects them a little bit too much at the moment. That will probably be taken from a, a open source project called Raw Therapy which does a good job that's got a tick box but I think that should just be default protect the skin tones anyway and then just have saturation um, edit it globally but yeah you've got your color grading mid-tones shadows highlights exactly the same layer um, color mixer you've even got the color calibration 
from Lightroom, which even Capture One doesn't have. Got your details like your sharpening, clarity, dehaze, structure, noise reduction, effects, got your vignette, and you can preload a LUT. I wonder if the DaVinci Resolve LUT would work. Adobe has presets, but not LUTs. So that's probably something I need to look into actually, because I've only, I'm not an expert in this software. I'm just keeping an eye on it at the moment. But let's look down here. We've got masking. It's even got like subject masking and it will do it with AI. I believe you select subject and then just draw a rough line around the subject rather than brush it all. It's got a bit of an abrupt cutoff at the minute actually if you go all the way to the edge so I'll go just inside the edge. Let's see how it did work well when I tried it the other day. This is not tried it since this recent update. Oh there we go. Yep. So a quick draw around that'll get you close, which if you feel free and open source it's not bad. It's a little bit of touching up needs doing on the collar. And then you can do all your usual like masked edits. You've got your linear gradient, your radial foreground sorry yeah no foreground and sky so yeah if you're coming from Lightroom it's it's piece of piss <laughs> but um, yeah it's even got an AI tool here which has still been implemented it's even got quick erase so you could let's see let's try this on this lady here, with a brush. Let's see how well this does. Sorry, lady, you're about to disappear, hopefully. Now, in paint selection, let's see what it does here. Oh, that didn't work very well. Oh. Comfy UI backend not detected. So let's just go back to the settings, which is, if I go back here and then home, this application has got the facility or will have the facility to do generative AI either on the CPU. So this is your basic. AI masking then you've got comfy UI which I think you can with comfy AI you can build your own AI server by downloading I don't know 15 gigs plus worth of data or you've got the cloud option where you can sign up to a service which I think comfy UI has a cloud service as well as the ability to make your own server but you have to pay like $20 a month at the moment but that's coming soon but you'll be able to integrate that and it will go to the cloud do the raw processing and then bring the image back down. So I'd imagine that would be the most accurate because that'll have the biggest data set to do the processing. But anyhow, this app is on Linux, Windows and Mac. So it's a great option potentially to fill the Lightroom void. So looking at this, if you've got Affinity Suite running well on Linux and then you've got this Lightroom alternative, you've really got the ability to do pro level stuff. This just needs to mature a bit and you need a few things like right click edit in application or in the future it will need some kind of tethering capabilities. But yeah, it's looking good for options in the future and I really want to see Linux do well. I'm getting a bit sick of Apple and Microsoft. I'm not getting too political. They were, well, I mean, Microsoft's deleting the ability to use Windows offline now. And Apple is bringing in digital ID. So it feels with these companies sometimes, they'll sell us down the river if there's the slight hint of more profit or making their shareholders happy. And getting a bit sick of all this. Now, ever since COVID, it's just everything's getting a bit out of hand. So Linux, hopefully, will be the future. It's not ready yet for the average Joe, but 
if you don't mind tinkering a bit, you can definitely do some pro level work on there. So I'm going to be keeping an eye on it. And I reckon I've got about three years left on my Mac before it gets obsolete. And I'm hoping by the time that's obsolete that um, I can just build my own PC and have a nice Linux build and do everything on that. I've still got to run all my printing kit and do my wedding photography. So I don't want to compromise on the kind of work I'm putting out. But yeah, it's looking positive. Anyway, that's all for now. Um, if you'd like to see more of my content or my Linux adventures or what I find on Linux to get pro stuff done, then hit the subscribe button and I'll catch you soon.